Welcome to a live watercolor tutorial. Today we'll be painting feathers. Hi, if you're watching live, feel free to say hi in the chat. Chloe is here, Annette is here. Hi, Linda. The main square uh, is Laura from Maine. And Patty is here. Hi, guys. So um, I do have an outline for you of these feathers in the description below. So you can go ahead and download that outline and then transfer it onto your paper. And I also have a reference photo for you for each of these feathers in the description of the video too. And there's also a link to a photo that I'm using as kind of like inspiration for the colors in these leaves. Um, Ashton is here. Hi, Liz from Holbrook, Arizona. She says it's a gorgeous morning. Okay, um, before we get started painting, I'll go over my supplies with you. So, um, this paper is cold press watercolor paper from Arches. It's a size five by seven. Um, and I plan on using these colors here. So some like grays, like a warm gray and, and like a darker gray, a black. And then I have like these two brownish uh, shades. <laughs> so I mixed all these with the Woodlands pan set. So I'll be using this. I'm thinking of using um, Sand Ridge, Shadow, Cavern, bare and graystone so basically the browns and blacks in the set um and yeah that's how i mix these colors and i might also use chinese white from windsor newton um or i might use white gouache i'm not really sure yet if i will um when i transferred my outline i used a pencil for the middle part of the feathers i used my pencil and then for like the outer edge of the feathers, I used watercolor pencil. Um, so these are the watercolor pencils I used. They're from Faber-Castell. Okay, and then um, the brushes I plan on using are right here. Uh, I plan on using my silver black velvet brushes. I have a size four and a two. These are round brushes. And I have like this um, script brush here, size one. And then I also have my Filbert Grainer brush. So this might come in handy too. Um, it's, it's like a rake brush. Okay, that was long. <laughs> now we're ready to actually begin painting. Who's ready? Um, let me know in the chat if you will be painting these feathers with me or if you're just hanging out. Um, Sarah is here. Hi, Sarah. So happy you're here. Claudia is here and Hannah. Good morning. And Radish and Rue. Awesome. Okay. So after you transferred your outline onto your paper, it is time to get started painting. So I'm going to be working on this feather and then kind of like working this way. So I'll start with this feather here, then the middle one, and then this one. And in the reference photos, um, I don't plan on painting the colors exactly, except maybe this middle one here. I'll still have this one be black. But there is a photo I linked that has the colors um, of the feathers that I, I kind of want to use. There's like a, a link to, uh, here, I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about, this photo here. So I, I kind of want to use these colors in my feathers. Um, okay, <laughs> let's get started, guys. Um, I am going to mix a very light gray. So we're, we're going to start with the first layer on this feather. I'm thinking it'll be two layers. And the first layer, I'm just going to keep it simple and do a very light gray in areas. And then when that is dry, I will add in the colors and details. Okay, so for the light gray, I'm gonna take my size four round brush, grab some water. 
Um, I kind of want to mix it in this area here on my palette. So I'm just going to kind of drag some of this up. And I'm going to take gray stone, just like a little tiny bit. Mix that in. And then I, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of white gouache to my palette and add this in my gray. I like to use gouache or like white watercolor paint to make gray because um, I, I feel like it's, it's easier to do it that way, at least for me. So yeah, I'm just kind of adding this white gouache in here. And then I need some more gray stone. This is kind of what I'm going for, like a very, very light gray. Okay, um, Annette says that she is going to paint along. Chloe says the same thing. Yay, uh, Peggy Cox, hi. She says she's hanging out, wanting to learn watercolor painting. Awesome, I love watercolor. You're, you're going to love it too. Uh, Fallon is here. Bob from Massachusetts is here. Linda is here. She says she's just hanging out, painting later today. The main square, um, who is, let's see, Laura, says, I'm just hanging out for a few. I ran out of paper. I did the beginner lotus tutorial yesterday. Oh, that's fun. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to take this gray and, okay, I'm, I think I'm going to start at the top of the feather here and I'm just going to start adding some like gray brush strokes like this okay and then I'm going to take my size two round brush it just has water in it and then I'm just going to kind of work this paint that I just painted with blend it um, Maybe move it around. The orange that I used on the outer edge of my leaf, like the watercolor pencil, is starting to also blend in my gray, which is fine. It's um, what I wanted to go for. So yeah, I'm just taking, this brush just has water in it and I'm just um, blending my paint. Now, I. Try your best to leave some white of your paper. I struggle with this. Sometimes I, I don't leave enough white of my paper. So you can always like drag off some if you're like, okay, I need, I need more white. Okay. Now I'm going to switch back to this brush that has paint in it. I'm going to move down. And I'm, my, my brush strokes go the same direction that the um, that the hairs and the feathers grow. All right, to be honest, <laughs> I'm I'm quite nervous about this this feather here. I, I feel like I'm most nervous about this one. I guess maybe it's a good thing that I'm doing it first and getting it out of the way, but I am like, oh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's how it's angled and that I am using some color in this feather. I don't know. We'll, we'll paint in this middle part here um, soon. Maybe next or like the last thing we do. Um, and it says, oh, to, to Peggy, uh, you are at the best place to learn. This is my first paint along. Thanks, Annette, for saying that. Um, Patty says, I'm, I'm hanging out today. I typically paint along with you, but today just hanging out. Hannah says to Patty, just wanted you to know. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, Patty. Um, Sarah says, can you use Payne's Gray? Yes, you can. You you can use whatever colors you, you guys want. Um, again, here are the colors I plan on like using, like mixing from the Woodlands pan set, if you needed that. So I'm thinking for this feather that I'm painting right now of using this color here. But we'll, we'll use it in the second layer. Okay. So every time I blend with this brush that just has water, I dip it in my water jar and then I dab it on my paper towel to soak up excess water and then I paint with it or I, I use it. <laughs> As I move down, I'm trying to use a little bit less gray. So now I'm just kind of adding water to my watercolor pencil lines here. Okay, there we go. There's the um, first part of this feather. Now I'm going to start painting up here a little bit. And then this is my brush that just has water. And then I'm adding some more water to this brush and going back in and just adding water to my watercolor pencil lines. Now, you don't you don't have to use watercolor pencils. Like I I just used them for my outline. That's it. I I just find them helpful when I like draw my watercolor painting first. I I like to use watercolor pencils. If if I use like a light pad or something. Um Okay, Liz says, I'm painting with you using two paints mostly, Holbein and Grum Grumbacher. Probably said that wrong. And she says, I am painting bright colors. Chloe says, I'm a beginner and this is quite hard as I can't get the angle of the strokes right. Yeah, this uh, tutorial might, might be challenging for beginners. It's, it's more kind of like, in between beginner and intermediate. Um, you, you might have to um, try this painting again or, or like do it twice, like two times. That, that might sound like stressful to do, but sometimes painting is something twice, like the second time you, you learn more um, and you are usually happier with the second result. Okay, um, now, now I'm going to mix this color here and use that. So to mix this color, uh, I'm using the Woodlands Pan Set here, okay? And I'm going to mix Cavern with Sandridge, and that's how I came up with this color here. If you don't have this pan set to mix this color, I would use like burnt sienna with maybe a little bit of white paint and gray, um, or like burnt burnt sienna with maybe a little bit of brown, white paint and uh, white gouache or something. <laughs> um, so yeah, okay. Um, 
So, oh, I, I need to mix the color. I'm like getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> so I kind of already mixed it as I was like planning things out. So I'm gonna mix some more. So again, in the Woodland set, I'm using Sand Ridge and Cavern. And I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I, I did list all of the supplies in the description with like links too. So um, you can find them like on Amazon. Okay. Now I'm going to be using two brushes again. One to apply my paint and the other to blend. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna start at the top again. And I'm going to start with by adding a little tiny bit of this paint. I'm not sure if I want too much of it. I kind of want only some, like, like, I guess what I'm trying to go for is um, areas of this feather, like spots. I'm having such a hard time, like, talking today. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'm just taking this brush that just has water and I'm just kind of blending. Maybe I um, ended up blending a little too much. Okay, then I'll drop in some paint. And then it, it'll just kind of blend into the wet area a little bit, which is fine. I'm gonna go down here, add like a line, go in with my brush here that just has water. Blend a little bit. Like that. Um, Peggy says, watching my six-year-old grandson a lot and brought him watercolors and he's loving it. He's, he, wait, has renewed interest. That's awesome. Uh, Sarah is here. Hi, Sarah. She says, hi, Allison. Hi, everyone. Yay for feathers. Sarah is the one that, um, suggested this tutorial guys so yeah she she's the one that uh <laughs> gave me this idea to do this tutorial okay so yeah as you can see i'm adding a little bit of this color switching my brushes i'm switching to my brush that, that just has water in it then I'm kind of blending this down towards the middle of the feather and I'm leaving some of that first layer unpainted. Then I'm gonna go down a little bit more, switch brushes, blend. Trying to go with the angle of the feather. Yeah, guys, I think this one is going to be the most challenging. So, um, at least we're getting it out of the way. So hopefully. It's okay. Um, okay. Aw, you guys are so sweet to each other. Um, hi, Yvonne, so happy you're here. She says, hi, Allison, love the feathers, thank you. Hi, Kizzy, she says, hello, Allison and everyone here. Have fun painting, I'm just relaxing and watching. Paint them later. Uh, hi, Yellow. 2615. She's 
or they, they say, I'm retired all my life. I have done ceramic on the wheel and hand building. There is a, a formulation of watercolor for ceramics, putting watercolor on ceramic, learning from you. Thank you. You're welcome. I did not know you, you could do that. That's really cool. Like I, I had no idea you could uh, add watercolor to ceramics. How cool is that? Like, <laughs> okay. Um, oops. I just painted with my blending brush. Okay, so I had to clean my this brush here and then add water to it to blend. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll paint in the middle part here last. Yeah, I'm, I'm going into these more delicate feathers. Um, I, I do want them to be a little lighter, like more fluffy. So I don't really want to add too much down here. Um, Radha Shimru says, looks great so far. Thank you. Okay, so as we work up here, again, I'm adding this color and then switching to my brush that just has water and then blending. And then I'm going to try and add a little less down here. Ma Mama Sita says, this is so fun. Thanks for doing this weekly. You're welcome. Yvonne says, I'm painting this on my journal just in case I mess up. <laughs> That's a good idea. Zara says, I'm just watching today. I've been finishing my woodland animals. Just need to put grass on them. Need, need to buy the, the brush. Um... Mama Sita says, I'm hoping to absorb some watercolor wisdom by osmosis. Uh, Yvonne says, I paint birds with all their feathers. Wait, I, I paint birds with all their feathers. It's different with these individual ones. Yeah, it is. It really is. Okay, so the second layer, um, at least up here, is dry. So this is basically the final layer we're, we're doing. Um, I'm cleaning my brushes here. I think I'll go in now and paint in that middle part because I feel like once I have that painted in, then adding the, the details to the this part of the feather will be easier. So if you look at um, the reference photo of this feather or even really any feather, it's it's like white or like a, a light gray. So I, I'm going to start with, um, with like a light gray. So again, I have some gray here on my palette and this here is white gouache. You, you can use white watercolor paint too. I just feel like using some kind of white makes, uh, mixing a light gray is like easier. Okay, then I'm gonna start like down here on this side, work my way this way. And then I'm using my other brush here, which is water, I'm going to blend it a little bit. Now I have a feeling I'm gonna make this darker than what it should be because I do that a lot <laughs> unintentionally. So. I might go in with white watercolor paint and uh, lighten up 
some areas. So I was looking up anatomy of the feather and this part we're painting right now is called a uh, hollow shaft. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's what it's called. It's, it's fun like painting nature and stuff because um, you, you can like look up what you're painting and learn, learn more about it, which is really cool. Okay. Cleaning my brush. Um, Yellow says, do you have a camera person or do you do this all by yourself? I, I film by myself and I, I have someone who now ed, like edits my videos, but these live streams, they're like, I don't have anyone edit them. They're just cause they're live. So, um, okay. I will now take my white gouache. Actually, I have some on my palette, but, um, let's just take some of this white gouache I need to add a little bit of water to it because it's kind of starting to dry. Okay, and then I'm going to add it in parts of, of this um, hollow shaft area of the feather. Okay. Then blend with this brush that just has water in it. Now, if, if you're happy with this area on your feather, you, you don't really have to like have to do this. Like if you, if you feel like you don't really need to make this lighter, then you can, um, wait or skip ahead if you're watching the replay. Okay, this is looking more like a feather, which is nice. Now we're gonna add some detail and then we'll move on to the next feather. Um, Blanca says, hello, good morning from Lima, Lima, Peru. Thanks so much for doing this, Allison. Too kind, you're welcome. Chloe says, looks amazing, Allison. Thank you. Yvonne says, watch the live Instagram of the hedgehog and mushrooms. Loved it. You mess up your, your wait, the mess up was epic. I was like, no worries, you'll fix it. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, um, I went live on Instagram, if you don't know, um, on Wednesday. And I, here, I'll show you real quick. I painted these mushrooms on this hedgehog painting and I messed up, like it, I, I accidentally like smudged my, like this, this mushroom all right here. And I was so upset. <laughs> so then I ended up painting a snail where that smudge was. But yeah, um, I, I did kind of fix it a little bit during the live stream, but it was still like noticeable. <laughs> okay, um, so... I am going to use this like a darker gray in some areas now. So I kind of already mixed it, but I I just used gray stone from the woodlands um, mixed with a little bit of white gouache. So you, you can use whatever gray you want to use. Make it however light or dark you want. Okay, I don't want to add too much of this. I'm just going to um, add it in a few areas. Okay. I kind of want this to be a little darker at the base, like this, and then blend up.
So this brush I'm blending with, again, it, um, it just has water in it. So I go back and forth. I um, add a little bit with that brush and then I switch to my blending brush and then I mix or I, I shade, I blend. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm having such a hard time talking. Okay, maybe because it's Friday and I'm so ready for the weekend. <laughs> okay. So this just, um, like at least for this feather, as you can see, doing this kind of adds more depth there, makes it have more contrast. And I, I want this feather to have gray in it along with that uh, orange brown color. Only a little bit more, then I'll go in with that orange color. trying to um, work my watercolor pencil lines a little bit too because some of them are still not like I not wet if that makes sense um Peggy says do you do watercolor tutorials at this time every week yes I do every Friday I go live with a tutorial now I won't be going live next Friday guys which I'm, I'm really sorry about that I have a market on on Saturday next week next weekend so I have to like set up my booth space on Friday and I just feel like yeah I, I won't be able to do a live tutorial so I'm sorry about that but they will resume um, in two weeks Okay, I'm gonna go um, into this other side here. Okay, we're almost done with this feather. I'm gonna add a little bit of this color and then we'll move on to the next one. Ashton says, I've always been so heavy handed. So painting something dainty and delicate is pretty challenging for me. We'll see how they turn out. I'm cheering for you, Ashton. You can do it. Okay, so I'm just reactivating this color um, again, it's this one here that I mixed. I I use Cavern mixed with Sand Ridge in the Woodlands pan set. Okay. Now I'm gonna add this where, wherever I I kind of want to. I'm I'm doing my own thing. I'm not really following the reference photo. <laughs>
Now it's important to, um, at least for, for this feather in particular, I mean, you, you can do really whatever you want, but I, I like to keep some white space in the feathers, like at least ones like this one, to not have it all be colors because white really makes, like really helps give the feather more depth and contrast. So as you can see, I left some white here and here, but that's, it's intentional. I, I want there to look, to look like it has some white in it. Okay, then a little bit down here. And then some more on the side. And with feathers, it's important to blend from the middle of the feather and out. So start here and then blend out. Kind of like flick your brush a little bit. This will help make it look fluffy. Okay, and then we can add even more detail and not do much blending. So um, add some like little lines. Down here. And up. Although I don't really like that very much. I'm going to take this brush with just water and blend, blend that out. Okay, I, I feel like I can spend more time on this feather, but I feel like um, I need to move on. <laughs> so cleaning my brushes. Um, and reading some of your comments here. Yellow says, when do you work for clients? What type of when, when do you work for clients? What type of watercolors do you use? Um, I use uh, Daniel Smith a lot in Windsor and Newton. And then I really like the Art Philosophy pan sets, like this Woodlands one. Um, okay. Anna says, do, how do you cover the graphite from tracing? Oh, I, I try my best to like when, when I transfer my outlines onto my paper and I use pencil, I try my best to make it as light as possible. If it's too dark, I, I erase it. Um, and like, here's my eraser and yeah, the, this middle part is graphite. So yeah, I just kind of erase it a little bit. Um, and I, I like usually my watercolors cover up where I had pencil lines, 
purpose, but sometimes it doesn't. Um, so yeah, I, I usually try my best to have my graphite be as light as possible. I hope that helps. <laughs> okay guys, now this middle um, feather, there is a reference photo for you. I think it's the second re reference, the one that says feather reference to, and it's a black feather. So I, I think for mine, I will um, paint mine black. So you'll, you'll have to get some black ready. I plan on using shadow here from the Woodlands, the Woodlands pan set and maybe some of this gray stone and also maybe some bare too. have like a little brown tint in it. Um, yellow says have, have to try watching this YouTube video on the TV. It's so much better than my iPad. Um, Let's see. Hannah says, Allison, please video your booth at the sale. I, I plan to. I, I plan to um, vlog. Have like a vlog for you guys. Um, Fallon says, that's exciting. I just did a community yard sale at my work and set up a table and sold art and stickers. Are you going to vlog the, the market and setting up your booth? That sounds fun, Fallon. Yeah, I there will be a vlog. I plan on making one of me um, preparing for it and also like me setting up my space and at the market. I'm really excited. Okay, I'm gonna take my, um, let's see, I think my size four round brush here we need to make some black. So again, I'm using shadow from the Woodlands pan set. I'm adding it here in my well with some water. This first layer will, will be light. So we wanna make sure to add a good amount of water. Maybe I'll even add some of this gray stone to lighten up this black a little bit. Okay. And I do plan on blending too. So this brush here has the paint in it. This one has the water in it. I will go ahead and start, um, let's see, maybe down here, but not, not where there are delicate hairs kind of a little bit more up like this. And then I'm kind of pushing down and then pushing back up, pushing down, pushing back up. And then I'm going to go in with my brush that just has water and I'm going to work this a little bit more, kind of blend from the inner part of the feather and out to create little hairs. That. This feather, I'm kind of painting a little differently than this one because this one, like, it, it basically has only black in it. Like, it's just like a black feather. So, um, yeah. I, I guess I could have painted that first one this way. But, yeah, I'm just kind of pushing down, pushing back up. And I'm really trying to go in the same direction as the hairs grow. Too. Then again, I'm blending with my blending brush. I'm blending from the inner part and out. Um, Yellow says, uh, I'll never be able to see you selling in, in your, oh, at, at your, oh, okay. At my booth space. Okay. Um, I live in West Wyoming. Yeah, my, my, uh, market is in Elkhart, Indiana. So if you guys are around that area, 
be cool if you came. It's my first market since before uh, COVID, so I'm really excited. Um, Patty says, if other it looks like I'm in for a challenge. If, if you're unsure about painting these feathers, I, if I were you, I would start with the middle one here that, that we're working on. Cause this one was a little challenging, I feel like. So I would start with, with this one because we're basically painting it one color. I mean, it has various tints or whatever, <laughs> but uh, this is basically black. Okay, I kind of went a little overboard with those hairs there. I should have had them be, not be so out. Okay, it's fine. It's okay. I kind of like this. I, I like that it's it's not as dark as the reference. Like may, maybe I'll keep it this way and add like a, a warm a warm gray to it in the second layer or um, some brown. Sarah says the feather is looking amazing. Thank you. Yvonne says, taking a small break. Forgot to water my plants. I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, the main square, Laura, I think it is, uh, says, that's my problem. I never know when to stop. It's difficult to determine when something is finished. I guess that's my, but that's the perfectionist in me. Yeah, I've, like, in the beginning of learning watercolor, I overworked a lot of my paintings because I, <laughs> yeah. But over time, I've learned to, to either like stop for the day and then come back to it the next day. Um, and if, if I feel like it's done, then it's done. And if, I feel like it could use a little bit more than I work on it. I found that that helps. But yeah, it is, it is hard to know when to stop. <laughs>
Um, and it says, can you give a link for your eraser? Um, yeah, I, I, I can erase it. Erase it. Oh my goodness. I can not link it. <laughs> But it's it's just like a it's it's called like a kneaded eraser. But yeah, I'll I'll link it for you guys when I'm done painting. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna paint in these little hairs now. I'm using like the very tip of my brush. And then I'm gonna go in with this brush that just has water in it kind of blend those up, go down, down here a little bit with just some water in my brush and kind of fade out some of those uh, delicate feathers, delicate feathers, delicate hairs. Okay, and then add some more down here, go in with my blending brush. There's the first layer. Yellow says, you clean brushes and water, but after you're done, do you clean them with soap? No, I don't. I, I just use water to clean my brushes. Now, hold, hold on just a minute. In like two seconds, I'll be back. Okay, that was more like five seconds, but um, I use this to deep clean my brushes. So over, over time, you, you might need to like do like a little deep clean. <laughs> so yeah, I, I use this for that. Master's brush cleaner. All right guys, so we're going to start the second layer on this leaf here. This time we'll want a darker uh, shade of uh, black. And we'll also paint in this. Okay, so I, I brought up the anatomy of a leaf on Google. And um, this part <laughs> is called the rat, the ratchet, ratchet. Here, I'll show you. The ratchet. So we'll paint that in too. Let's, let's go ahead and, and paint that first and then we'll add the second layer on the main part of the feather. Okay, so I'm gonna take shadow with my size two round brush. It's basically black, so I'm taking black, adding it to this part of my palette with some water. And if you look at the reference, the uh, ratchet is like basically black until it gets to about right here and then it starts to lighten up. So I'm, I'm going to start like right here, paint along the edge Before I paint any more, I'm gonna take my size four round brush with just water in it. And I'm gonna blend this down because this starts to lighten up down here. Like so. And then as we get more up, I'm not too worried about blending because this is all going to be black. And then as we go up, it becomes thinner. And I'm gonna take my, my blending brush, blend down here again. So I'm blending down to make it lighter right here. And I'm just going to kind of blend up a little bit. Blend up.
then I'm gonna paint in the top part like that. Then I'm switching brushes, switching to my blending brush. Hannah says, I'll be doing my first booth this fall. Yikes. <laughs> Their booths are a lot of work, um, but they're also a lot of fun. So you're, you're going to have so much fun. You'll be able to meet other artists or like other business owners and connect with like your customers. It's, it's really cool. Okay, um, now I'm going to take the seam black. I do need to add some more to my palette. And I'm going to add, um, oh wait, I need to finish. I need to finish this area. So I'm going to add a little bit there. Okay. Take another brush with just water, blend up a little bit and then blend back down all the way down like so. And we, we want this part to be fairly light, but yeah, that's, that's probably good. Okay. Then I'm going to take black again. Now I'm going to add some more black in detail to my feather. Switch to my blending brush. I'm going to add some up here. So I'm basically adding this where the feather is the darkest. Um, I'm not going perfectly off of the reference, by the way. I'm just kind of doing my own thing. I, I don't really want my whole feather to be black. I kind of want to have some gray in it, so... Ellen says, that's only two hours and 45 minutes for me, but I have to work that day. Oh, that is so sad. It would have been fun to see you. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I, I haven't um, applied for any other markets yet, so I don't know. I'm not really sure. Uh, I'll see how this one goes. I'm not really sure if I'll do any more like this summer, but maybe I will in the fall time. I definitely will be doing one um, for the holidays. Okay, as we get down here to the, the little hairs that kind of poke out, they're not as dark. So I'm, I just added a little bit and now I'm just kind of blending that out to create soft hairs. I might also add just a little bit more and blend out. Okay. Yellow says, I love the watercolor set. I just bought it. I have all their sets. My grandkid learn from all the sets. They are teens. It's amazing how fast they learn. <laughs> yeah, I, I love the art philosophy sets. I don't have all of them. I'm sure someday I will. <laughs> Eventually. Let's see, I don't have the complexion one. I don't have like the tropical one. There's like another one that has a lot of blues in it. Oh, it's, it's called Currents. I don't have that one. I don't have the, it's, it's called like sparkling lights or like shimmering lights or something like that. I don't have that one either.
And then you, you can add some more detail as you go, like this. Some like lines. You can start at the top edge of the feather like this and kind of blend this way in some areas. Although I, I don't really know um, how much I like this. Okay, we're almost done with this feather. Are you guys finding this tutorial helpful for feathers? I might add a little bit more over here. Blend down a little bit. Okay. Just a few more things. I'm going to darken up this uh, ratchet. <laughs> That's such a weird term. And down and up a little bit blend it out okay there I'm pretty happy with that again I, I could probably spend more time on this but I I don't know I feel like I should probably move on Okay, wait, I, I will add a little bit of detail. So you, you can use like the tip of your brush, add some more black, like that, some more detail. Okay. Oh wait, I, I do have some of my watercolor pencil up here that I didn't really blend in that well. Okay, there we go. There's the second one. How are you guys doing with your feathers? Where are you at? Are you caught up or are you still working on the first one? Let me know in the chat box. Yellow says, I'd like to know what what nature with watercolor is about yeah um there's a link in the description that takes you to the membership it's currently closed but if if you want to learn more about it you can always email me alisonlineart at gmail.com or hello at alisonlineart and um yeah 
Okay guys, it is time for the artist spotlight. So we are going to take a quick like two minute break and do the artist spotlight. Okay, so um, <laughs> let me turn my camera around here. Artist spotlight time. So if you're new to this channel, every Friday when I go live, we do an artist spotlight. Um, to get the chance to be featured, all you have to do is use my hashtag Allison Lion Art Tutorial on Instagram when you finish your, your finished painting uh, for one of my tutorials. And yeah, so today we are featuring Liz and Liz is here. She's in the chat. We're featuring Liz. Um, I linked her Instagram below for you guys if you'd like to support her. But she did all of my fruit tutorials. So these are all here on, on YouTube and she did all of them. Aren't they beautiful guys? Wow, like amazing. She also did my woodland animal challenge, which it is linked below in the description for you guys, where we paint five animals together in 10 days. You, you can uh, sign up for that. But she did that with flowers. Beautiful. She's also part of Nature with Watercolor, my monthly watercolor membership. And this is one of the tutorials in that membership. But yep, yeah, there's Liz for you. So um, uh, you, you can find her Instagram linked below if you'd like to support her on there. Okay, that was fun. Let's uh, continue painting. Let's continue uh, working on the feathers. Okay, to hook up my camera again. Okay, here we go. Oh, you guys are so supportive. So sweet. Uh, okay. Now, before we get started on the next feather, um, I, I'll read some more of your comments. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Um, Let's see, Liz says, we learned about shaky hands with painting antennas on butterflies. I recommend deep breaths and then paint lines as you breathe out, don't hold your breath. Yeah, an antennas on butterflies are like really intense. <laughs> okay, so for this last feather, you can find the reference. It is a uh, feather reference three in the description below. And it's of a white feather. But I, I kind of want to combine these two feathers into this one so that it just looks cohesive. So I was thinking of having this one be mostly white but have like a little bit of gray in it um, in black and then maybe even a little bit of that orange color. So I am going to take my size 2 round brush here and we want to first mix a very, very light gray, which I already have here on my palette. Okay, and then I'm gonna start on this side, kind of after where all of those little hairs are. After that, I'm gonna start with this color. Like this. Then I'm going to switch to my blending brush, but just, it just has water in it. I'm going to blend. Like so. Okay. Um, Annette says, my next set of paints will be the woodland set. I just got the decadent pie set and Neptune brushes. What a difference it makes. Yes. I, I feel like um, good quality brushes like 
really makes a difference in your painting. Okay, and then I'm gonna kind of paint in this line a little bit and then some hairs up there and then go in with my blending brush. Okay, now I'm going to go into the side and do the same thing. I'm trying to be intentional with leaving some white in this feather. Um, Liz says, Nature with Watercolor Group is closed, uh, but will open again in September. Yep. Um, and then she says, you, you can do tutorials on that site anytime after you join. Yeah, Liz, it's, uh, it's $12 a month. 12. Yeah, Nature with Watercolor, um, is so fun. I'm so and I love all my members so much. You guys are amazing. It'll open again in September, maybe at the end of August. It just depends. I haven't really set like a, a date yet. Um, and it's $12 a month. Okay, so I am painting in the little hairs. Down here, I'm trying to, to use um, not as much paint because I, I want them to be a little lighter. And then, yeah, I'm going in with my blending brush, trying to make them fluffy looking. And then I'm going in with the very tip of my brush and painting on those hairs that uh, just kind of stick out down here. Like that. Um. Liz says, loving feathers. I have painted many feathers. I always pick up feathers. My daughter follows behind me and disposes of them wherever I leave them laying all over the house. <laughs> I love feathers too. I, I like to find them. I, I have like two, like two big ones. Or wait, I, I have three big ones. I, I have a turkey one, a peacock feather, and... um just like a, a black feather. I'm now painting in that middle part The it's, it's called Ratchets. The Ratchets. And then down into the hollow shaft. I feel so like smart saying these terms. <laughs> I just kind of painted the outer edge of the hollow shaft with the gray like this and then I, I kept it white in the middle. Hi, to Topinga. They say, when did you first start painting and exploring art? Gosh, ever since I was tiny, like a little girl. 
Um, but I, I became more serious about my art in college. Like I studied art, but then I took a few years off. I, I changed my major in college and I graduated <laughs> with a degree that's not art. Um, and then I found painting again, like four years ago, actually four years ago this month. I found painting again and I also started my art business four years ago this month. I am taking this darker gray now and I'm going to add some like in the, in the middle here for the ratchets. <laughs> and then I'm going to go in with my brush that just has water, my blending brush. I'm going to blend this just a little bit. Like that. And then I think I'm going to paint in this other side. Okay. I might also go into some of the gray areas again. Add some more detail like that. Thank you, yellow. They say, wow, nice painting. Uh, Liz says, I've been drawing and painting from a very young age. I'm 60 now, right when C19 started. Allison started these tutorials that got me dusting off my watercolors. Aww. And she says, I had gotten very discouraged with my artwork and am now so encouraged. Thank you, Allison. I'm now doing a personal 100 day finished painting challenge. That is awesome, Liz. Yeah, I, I knew you've been doing that. A challenge to finish your paintings. That's so cool and a good idea. Gosh, I have like... I don't know, a handful of paintings that I need to finish. But I, I bet you feel so good once you finish those paintings. It's, it's always like a really good feeling when you finish something. Okay, as we get down into the, the delicate hairs of this feather, going to add them in like that. Gosh, I, I also have this brush here that I could have used that maybe could have, like, would have been helpful, <clears throat> but it's fine. So yeah, I'm just using like the tip of my brush, adding these little hairs. Some poke down like that. And straight out. And I'm gonna start moving up a little bit and add some more detail. Okay. I was thinking of adding a little bit of that uh, orange color, just, just like a little tiny bit. So 
So I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna take this the orange color we used in the first feather. I hope I don't regret this. <laughs> Blend it out. Okay. I like it. I like it. Okay, a little bit more. Okay. Um, Hannah says, can nature with watercolor be joined? Wait, can... Uh, can nature with watercolor be joined to just watch the old tutorials for now until September? Yeah, Han Hannah, just uh, go ahead and send me an email. AllisonLaneArt at gmail.com. And, and we can talk. <laughs> we can have a talk. <laughs> uh, Sarah says, the feathers are looking great. Thank you. Liz says, Oh, to, to Hannah. H Hannah, email Allison. <laughs> okay. Um, I do have some of my watercolor pencil like on the outer edge that still needs to be blended in. So I'm going to do that. Okay. All right. Um, I'm trying to think now. I I really like these two feathers. This first one, I'm just a little like, mm, I don't know, but yeah, I, I guess I can always revisit it later, but I'm pretty happy with it. What do you guys think? You guys like these feathers? Here's a close up. Let me hook up my camera like this. Um, okay. That's it for this tutorial, guys. It was a lot of fun, wasn't it? I might work on this feather a little bit more later, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, don't forget, if you finish this, I want to see it. So post it to Instagram and tag me, Alice in Lion Art, and use the hashtag Alice in Lion Art Tutorial. Um, and yeah, and you might be featured in the next live stream. And I'm not going live next Friday because I have a market that Saturday, and I just feel like I won't be able to handle going live. <laughs> So there, there won't be a live stream next Friday, but there, they, they will continue um, after next Friday. And there's a tutorial coming out on uh, on Tuesday. Where is the painting at? I don't know where the painting is that we did, but on Tuesday, I'm coming out with a mushroom tutorial, guys similar to these mushrooms here. So on Tuesday, you, you can find that tutorial. And there's also a tutorial I came out with last week on how to paint grass. So you might find that helpful. Um, 
Anyways, thank you guys. It was so much fun. I want to spend the last minute here reading your comments. So you, you can leave if you have to. It's okay. Um, Mama Sita says, thanks for the tips about painting with shaky hands. Please keep them coming if you have more. Um, and it says, oh, to, to yellow, start with Allison's 10 day challenges listed in the description. Great start. I joined nature with watercolor and I love it. Learned so much. Thank you. And Annette, I appreciate that. Yeah, I have three 10 day watercolor challenges that you might like. They're in the description below for you. There's a bird one, a butterfly one, and a, a woodland animal one. And actually, these, these two animals here are part of the Woodland Animal Challenge, the rabbit and the hedgehog. Um, let's see. Anna says, Allison, love your feathers. Mine is bad. It's okay. I, I encourage you to do this twice if you have to. Uh, it's, it's okay to do paintings two times. Liz says, not 100 days. I'm hoping to finish 100 paintings. Oh, okay. Wow, 100. That's awesome. Um, she, she says, because I, I work, I can only do around five paintings a week. I just got a commission of eight sticker designs. So it might be end of 2021. 20, wow, Liz, that's awesome. Uh, Yellow says, thank you for all the free stuff like outlines, tutorials, reference photos. You're welcome. Yellow says, what is that brush? I don't know what one you're talking about, but this one is Filbert Grainer brush. It's like a rake brush, um, Princeton. And then I was using my silver black velvet brushes. I have a size two, size four, round. Sarah says, thank you, Allison. You're welcome. Um, Hannah says, I saved my first feather painting from two years ago. It was awful, but I'm glad I saved it. So I can be encouraged that I've improved. Oh, that's awesome, Hannah. Okay. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'll go now. <laughs> thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you, Mama Sita, Hannah, Yellow, um, Sarah Reed, Sarah Lucas was here, Liz, um, Chatra, I'm, you missed it. We're like leaving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it was nice to see you though. Um, yeah, thank you guys. To Topanga, Annette, Patty, um, I'm just naming off your names. I like to do this. Fallon was here, uh, Yvonne, Laura from the main square. Okay. Bye guys, appreciate you. If you're still watching, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It means a lot to me. It um, tells YouTube that people like this and YouTube will share it to more people. Um, and yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you, Fallon. Have a great day. Thank you, Annette. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. See you Tuesday for the mushroom tutorial. And um, I wish you a wonderful weekend. Bye.